Jedi. Yeah, crown me king, tell them he didn't Shalom, me king. and welcome to another edition tell here Trump on the Genesis 49 page, where crown we say no to vague interpretation and we get thorough breakdowns. Genesis 49, as we back, we're never moving backwards. Here to put Ezra on the atlas. Y'all know the slogan. We say no to vague interpretations and give thorough breakdowns. Now, in today's lesson, today's topic, it's going to be a goodie, like I always say, and I always deliver. And I owe that to the Most High. Today's topic is going to be called or labeled Bearing False Witness. And it's inspired off of the Bering Strait theory, the path which many people for centuries promulgated as saying this is how the people of America happened through the Bering Strait. Today we're going to dismantle this century old lie. Geneticists refutes the Bering Strait theory. So a lot of you people need to update your scholarship that's still pushing this old myth that has, hasn't yet been substantiated with any archeology, span none so whatsoever. So the geneticists are refuting the Bering Strait theory. It says the bottom line is that even though the physical corridor was opened by 13,000 years ago, it was several hundred years before it was possible to use it. The project leader Eski Willer Slav, an evolutionary geneticist from the University of Copenhagen and Cambridge University, says in a press release, that means that the first people entering what is now the u.s central and south america must have taken a different route and we're going to talk about what route that was because the native indians themselves they propagate a, a different message they tell you where their ancestors come from we don't need these people that that did not live in their cultures that did not experience their life their lives that did not know of their nomenclature did not know of their oral tradition did not know of their written traditions at the time that it was written down at the time that it was being taught to come and dictate you know hundreds of years later how they came into the lands known as the americas so we're, we're going to discuss that later on in the presentation so the the population geneticists the evolutionary geneticists right the authority says that these people must have came a different route there's no way they came through this corridor known as the barren strait it says whether you believe these people were a clovis or someone else they simply could not have come through the corridor as as long claimed and the source for this is miss the smithsonian mag the article is the first humans entered the Americas along the coast, not through the ice. Jason Daly, August 6th, August 16th and 2016. So they tried to switch the theory up and say, oh, they, they came along the coast of Alaska or uh, Northeast or the Beringia area or locality. But even that's off and we're going to show you this off. Older, older localities were inhabited first. So you can't say the original, the first people to enter America came through the Bering Strait. It's impossible. And this is why it says, but new evidence has made that timeline hazy over the last decade. Research shows that humans were living south of the ice sheets before the ice free corridor opened up. A settlement in Monte Verde, Chile, shows people had made it all the way down south america 15,000 years ago and a more recent discovery indicates that humans hunted mammoth in florida 14,500 years ago so there's no way that the first people according to their dating system and chron chronology there's no way they came through the corridor known as the bering strait the first people that is because you see 
other settlements and localities being inhabited before that time. That destroys the whole notion. That destroys this and puts this theory in the myth box. And the source for that is the same site, Smith, Smithsonian Mag. And the article was First Humans Entered the Americas Along the Coast, Not Through the Ice by Jason Daly, August 16th year 2016 again you guys got to update your scholarship you come up with these old century old tales that cannot be substantiated with evidence here it is right here earliest americans could not have arrived by dry land study indicates research shows that ice age corridor between siberia and alaska would have been too inhospitable a migration route contradicting long-standing theory and you still got I, I guarantee this this stuff is still in school books and textbooks they're still teaching this barren straight garbage and nonsense even though it's not even feasible for someone to cross an ice corridor because of the inhospitable conditions meaning you can't live there you can't maintain life you can't travel you can't settle because the, the place was just way too cold and there was low food reserves so we're going to talk about that so to reiterate it's simply impossible the first americans the earliest people to cross from siberia to alaska and begin the colonization of two vast continents linked by a narrow isthmus could not have simply followed the deer and the buffalo across dry land during the last ice age 13,500 years ago. They would have been in the right place but at the wrong time, a new study shows. What is now the Bering Strait would indeed then have been dry land. There was, as scientists have known for many years, an open 1,500 kilometer corridor of grassland between two great ice sheets that would have made migration deep into North America possible. And this article is from The Guardian. Earliest Americans could not have arrived by dry land study indicates by Tim Radford, August the 10th, 2016. A new, a new proposed route. But according to a new study in Nature, this route wasn't fully open for traffic until 12,600 years ago. This means that the very first pre-Columbian settlements of America, perhaps by people known to archaeologists as the Clovis culture, must have been either by sea or by hugging the Pacific shoreline. Long before the ice sheets retreated and the ocean closed and to flood the Bering Strait and separate the old world from the new. So now they're saying, oh, they had to go another route. Had to be the sea or hugging the Pacific shoreline. But we know that that is even a farce because you, they can't even come from that area because we find older localities in South America and Chile and in Florida. So this theory has been debunked. And again, the, the Guardian is the, uh, the source. So to simply put it, no food. No Bering Strait route because you can't migrate without resources. So here it is. It says study based on radiocarbon dating, pollen fossils, and ancient plant and mammal DNA from lake sediments found that before 12,600 years ago, there was no grasses, trees, bison, woolly mammoth, or rabbits to serve as food and shelter along the corridor. So if you don't have food and shelter, there's no way you can go and cross this corridor because you have to send send waves of people through this corridor and these waves of people need resources it's common sense if they don't have shelter then they can't they can they can't provide warmth shelter from the temperatures and the climate the climate they don't have food well that's a no-brainer i don't even have to explain that the source again is the guardian article earliest americans could not have arrived by dry land study indicates Tim Radford, August the 10th, 2016. The same article states that the conditions were too in inhospitable. There's no way they could have lived in these conditions or migrated in these conditions. It just wasn't a viable route. So the article says what nobody has looked at is when the corridor became biologically viable, said Willis Slev. When could they actually have survived a long and difficult journey through it? 
He and colleagues sampled DNA from the muds of Charlie Lake in British Columbia and Spring Lake in Alberta, sites along the corridor, for traces of surviving DNA that would have accumulated with animal excrement and plant tissue. The sequences told their own story. Before about 12,600 years ago, the region would have been inhospitable. But since a prehistoric people with a distinctive to stone tools had already colonized what would become the United States in 13,000 years ago, they must have come by another route, perhaps along the shoreline of Alaska and Canada over beaches, dunes, estuaries, long since covered by the Pacific Ocean. So they said, we got to come up with another theory because this is not not looking good. So these people had to come by boat, you know, and they still trying to put it over in an area. But again, you can't put it in an area because you have older localities being populated by people in Florida and in Chile. So this, this, this theory is just done. It's done. It, it, the inhospitable conditions, no food, no shelter. The ice corridor itself being hard to cross, difficult to cross, the temperature and the climate, it just shows you that this would not be a viable route. There's no way in the world that anybody crossed the Bering Strait to come to America. And especially with those conditions and trying to say that, oh, this is where the people in America come from. No, the people of America came by ship. That's what they're slowly recognizing, that the people that... It, came and inhabited America, came across the sea. Here's the Mayan perspective, because we, we dealt with modern archaeology, the geneticist Willer Slev, Eski Willer Slev, pardon me. We dealt with the research, we dealt with the science. One thing they, they are failing to do what they're, they're getting their wake up call when they see these theories get smashed into a, obliteration, right? What did the actual people of the land say about the peopling of America and their lands? What did they teach? How did they saw, how did they preserve the social memories and, and historical memories? What was their message of how their ancestors rooted the land known as America? Has anybody ever stopped and thought about that? Instead of just coming to your own conclusion based off preconceived notions, that Burn Strait thing came from Garcia, and I believe it was in the 18 or 1700s. Could have been earlier than that. And these people just ran with it. With no proof, no evidence, and nothing, just ran with it. And it take it take you all the way up to the 21st century to figure out that oh this is no this couldn't it's just unfeasible it's unfeasible so let's just look at the Mayan perspective why we use the Mayan Mayans let's go to the scripture Judges chapter five verse fourteen and it says and out of Zebulun they that handled the pen of the writer so the Zebulonites were known for their record keeping or at least on, on the lowest level being literate because they were able to write which is a viable skill at any time period because they can record events so the school of thought I come from and from my research the Mayans would be the Zebulonites if you haven't subscribed to the channel Genesis 49ers you can check my, my prior videos I did a breakdown on Issachar and Zebulon so it said, it's a known fact that the Mayans deified their ancestors. They have a particular deity known as Shibalon. I posit that this Shibalon is a metathesis, which is the transpos transpositions of sounds and vowels from one language to another, right? That's what a metathesis is. And I, I posit that Shibalon is a metathesis of Zebulon, the patriarch of the Mayans. It is clear from the foregoing abstracts that the Maya of Yucatan recorded their history up to the time of the conquest in their hieroglyphic books or codices. That fact is beyond dispute. So the Mayans have their own history and they, they, they give a telling of how the peopling of America, how their people came into America. 
We don't need these big headed idiots, buffoons to come up and contrive their own theories on how it happened. We have the written records. That's what that's the absurdity of this, the absurdity of this Baron Strait thing. It just neglects the original people and their stories and their history and what they stated. And they superimpose their own ideas and their own theory when they didn't even live amongst these people. They are centuries removed from these people. And the source for that last, that third paragraph is the source Maya Records by Sylvanus Griswold Morley, page number is 36. So he said it's beyond dispute that they these people record their own history. So let's dive into the Maya Kichi records of their origin. Since they record the origin, right? All of the major Kichian sources are consistent in relating mythological founder fathers of the Kichian nations, originated from somewhere across the sea. According to the Popol view, the forefathers Balaam Kitsi. Balam Akab, which is Jacob, Mahukuta, and Iki Balam came from Cha'apa Palo, which means across the sea. Herleb al Kij, where the sun emerges, that is from the east. So, in their own, in their, in their own words, in their own writings, in their own testament, they say that they came from the east across the ocean meaning they had to be a seafaring people and a maritime people which we know that the maya people were a maritime people and they did conduct trade on ships a good book on that is jack forbes the uh the american discovery of europe so the source that i use is the pre-columbian landscapes of creation and origin the editor is John Edward Stoller, page number 123, 123. So the people themselves, the Mayans, the ones that record their history all the way up to the time of the conquest. So we can trust their records. That's the indigenous account. We don't need these big wigs and these people that want to superimpose their theology and their understanding and their ideology on the history instead of looking into what did these people actually teach they taught that they came across the sea and they carried names like balam which means lord in the aramaic and hebrew tongues so i mean the bearing straight again like i call it bearing false witness because it's just a lie it's a farce so with that i'm going to conclude the lesson i appreciate the viewers i appreciate you brothers and sisters uh, if you have any commentary, leave the comments below, whether it be positive or negative. I will try to interact with as much people I can um, dealing with the, the material. I say that again, dealing with the material. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please share the video on the, so the various social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Let's get these videos out there um also like the video so with that being stated more, more content is coming to the channel i got about five in a queue five of them in a queue that i'm working on i'm trying to bring more and more and more content content to this channel i know you guys are hungry for content and believe me i want to provide it for you and i just i just um i appreciate the subscriber base and i appreciate the viewership so i will be up in the ante you will see more videos just as 49ers signing out